In this lesson, we're going to create a team and a channel. Now, uh, not all organizations allow all users to create teams. So if you don't see the join or create a team option on your team's application, then it could be that your organization has chosen another process of requesting a team. So maybe you have an approval process. So be sure to check with whoever uh, administers your team's environment or just uh, put in a ticket with IT to figure that out. Um, however, if you do see this option to join or create a team inside of Teams, when you're on the Teams node, we say Teams a lot in this training, <laughs> um, go ahead and click it. And then from here, we click on Create a Team. Now, you may remember that basically every team is built on a Microsoft 365 group. So uh, you do get the option to use an existing group if you want to. So you don't have to create a whole different set of resources, right? Um, or you can start from scratch, which would create a new group. Okay, now down below, uh, these would also create new groups, but I can start from a template where perhaps I want to create a team that's going to help onboard employees. I would choose that template. I can see that it's going to come pre-built with a number of channels and pre-integrated with a number of apps. Okay, and I can continue with that, but we'll go ahead and start with a blank one so you can see kind of how to get started if you don't want to use any of those templates. So I'm going to choose from scratch. Let's say I don't have an existing group that I want to use, um, and I just want to start from scratch, get my new mailbox, get my new SharePoint site, and all of that. So remember that our teams, just like our groups uh, from the SharePoint chapter, can be private or public. So I'm going to choose private because I want to be able to manage my membership and make sure only the people who need to see the content will. And we're going to call this Nate's team and create. All right, so Nate's team is created. And from here, I can add members. And I'm just going to add one. And I'll show you how to add more later. But I'm just going to add Adele. And from here, before I finish, I can make Adele a co-owner. Now, it is recommended to have at least two owners in case someone leaves, right? So you have a backup. Um, and anybody who's an owner should probably do some level of training to make sure that they, uh, they're they comfortable with the responsibilities and the consequences of some of the options that are available to owners. Um, so we're not really getting into owner level details in this training, but just keep that in mind that you probably want to do a little bit more uh, if you're going to be that owner. So we'll leave Adele as a member for now and close. And now we've got our new team. Now, first thing I like to do, if I create this team, it's clearly going to be more important to me than maybe some of the other teams that I have access to. And then I'm going to drag Nate's team all the way up to the top. Now you may be wondering, can't we just pin it like we did our chats earlier? Not quite. If I use my ellipsis on a team, I don't get a pin option. However, you can pin specific channels. So if I were particularly interested in go-to-market plan as part of the market project team, you can pin a channel. And that would show up at the top, but it's only channels, not the whole team. So I still rearrange my teams. Uh, some people prefer to drag those into alphabetical order because that'll help them find them too. All right, so we've got our, our new team and we've got our general channel, which we get with every team. And then notice we have our post, files, and wiki. We also get those three tabs with every channel we'll create. So now let's go ahead and create another channel. I'll use my ellipsis and add channel. And then we're gonna call this one training. All right, we'll leave it as standard, meaning that everybody who's part of Nate's team also has access to this. So it's not separate membership or anything. And I also want to make sure that it shows it on everybody's channel list. Okay, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. And add. There we go. So if I didn't check that last box, let me just show you with another team what it might look like for a user. All right, so notice down on the market project team, I have two hidden channels. So if I don't automatically show a new channel on everybody's list, it could show up hidden on this little extra menu for the team. So uh, it does save a little bit of space if these aren't so important. But if it is an important channel and you want to make sure people see it, check that box. And then you can always go into team settings later and, and change it so that that's not automatically shown and give people the choice. All right, so now I have two channels. We're going to create one more. So on my team's ellipsis, I'm going to choose add channel. And then this one, we're going to call admin. And I'm going to change it to private. And a private has a lot, of, a, a lot of consequences that you'll want to consider before you do this, but we'll create it for this demo. 
um, where my intention is that only a few people who are part of the overall team will have access to this more sensitive channel. Maybe we're going to share uh, confidential details, or maybe we're going to strategize and don't want the whole team to see everything that we're working on until it's ready. Um, so we'll just create an admin channel, choose private, and next. And notice I don't get the box this time to show on everyone's list because, well, not everyone's going to have access, right? <laughs> so I'll click on next. And uh, one thing you'll notice right away is that we get a members box where we can start to add people to this team. Now remember I only have Adele as a member of this team so far, and you can't add people who aren't part of the parent team. So for example, if I try to add Nestor, it doesn't find any matches because he's not part of Nate's team yet. So I can only add Adele. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that. And then just like with a normal team or the Microsoft 365 group, basically, I can make Adele an owner of this channel, even though she's only a member of the team. Okay, so it's separate membership. All right, so we'll leave Adele as a member and I'll click done. Now, because I created that channel, I am the owner of that channel too, meaning I can manage its settings. Um, but keep that in mind, if you allow your, your members to create private channels, they become the owner of that channel. So you could potentially be the owner of Nate's team, but not have access to a private channel. So keep that in mind uh, as, you, as you think about what you want to do in your organization. Um, something else to think about is that even though admin has a files tab, and it's setting up right now, but even though there is a files tab for this admin channel, um, it's actually creating a whole new SharePoint site, and that's how it maintains permissions. So remember earlier we talked about every single channel that's part of a team gets its own folder in the shared document library that came with the SharePoint site behind the team. But with private channels, it doesn't create a folder in the same library because of permissions. It creates a whole separate SharePoint site. So from a, a navigation standpoint, it can be a little complicated and confusing for users who are part of those private channels. Um, and it's hard to kind of grow out of that, right? We'd have to move files if we did decide that we wanted a separate team or if we wanted to reconsolidate with the main team. It's a bit of a process. All right, so we've got our, our new team and our new channel. And then as you're getting this set up, you know, if you are going to be the owner, you'll want to use that ellipsis and go into Manage Team. And that's where you can manage everything about the, the settings and abilities of your team members. Um, if you need to change the team name or anything, you can use Edit Team. Um, and if you uh, want to add additional people, you can choose add member, which you can also do for manage team. So let's go ahead and add another member. I am going to add Nestor. And I'll add Alex. There we go. And we'll make Nestor a co-owner with me. And close. All right, so we've got a, a few more members in there. That wasn't too hard, right? And I'll just show you the back end too. If we go into the ellipsis and manage team, we can manage our membership, pending requests in case we allow those for people who are finding our team and requesting to join. We've got channels, okay. settings. This is important if you want to kind of limit what people can do. And there's even more settings, but we won't get into all of that in this training. But just know that you can look there to manage kind of how your team works. And channels are similar. They have their own ellipsis. You can use manage channel. And then just a, a few settings, not near as many as a team, but once again, just kind of uh, changing what people can do in that particular channel.